what is going on guys thank you so much for being here i forgot to press record um we are doing an entire set review for wilds of eldraine uh this is take two because yesterday we tried to record this and we lost all the audio for the vod uh which is why i am locally recording these just in case because i don't i have trust issues apparently um we've already done white we've already done blue we're gonna go over the set mechanics um, as we run across them, so don't be afraid if you're starting with this video. You don't have to go all the way back to white if you don't want to. Um, I do encourage that though, because I think having an idea of what the entire set does, each and every color and their kind of archetypes is, is pretty good. The knowledge is strong. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube later, I would love it if you could subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. It would mean the world to me. Um, if you would also like the video and maybe comment on the video, let me know which cards from this set you're looking forward to the most. Uh, what do you think of the story? Whatever you want to talk about. Let's just talk magic in the comments. Say hello. Uh, I love you. Thank you for being here. And let's jump right in. Uh, Ashiok is our first black card. Now, Ashiok is a terrifying but awesome planeswalker. It is also the only planeswalker in Wilds of Eldraine. This is the first set post March of the Machine uh, Phyrexian Invasion era. So there's a lot uh, up in the air as it pertains to planeswalkers and their abilities, but Ashiok maintained their planeswalking ability and it is currently on Eldraine for some reason. Obviously, it kind of fits because Ashiok is very nightmarish and invasive. So being on Eldraine will probably be strong. Um, let's take a look. Ashiok Wicked Manipulator is three black black for a five loyalty planeswalker. Its static ability is if you would pay life while your library has at least that many cards in it, exile that many cards from the top of your library instead. That's pretty strong. You get free... Um, life pay life abilities um and they those cards go in exile which is also good the plus one on ashiok is look at the top two cards of your library exile one of them and put the other into your hand minus two is create two one one black nightmare creature tokens with at the beginning of combat on your turn if a card was put into exile this turn put a one one counter on this creature that's pretty strong too uh nightmares that kind of grow over time and then the ultimate on Ashiok is target player exiles the top X cards of their library, where X is the total manual value of cards you own in exile. So this is really neat because adventure as a mechanic is back in Eldraine. Um, let me just jump quickly to this one. This is the first adventure card in black. So adventure is a side mechanic where you can cast the adventure portion of this card from your hand. When you do, this card goes into exile, and then you can cast the full card from exile at a later time. So with Ashiok's minus ability, the minus seven, anything that you have in exile, also the minus two ability, those nightmares grow every time a, or as long as something has been put into exile this turn. Anytime you cast an adventure, those cards are technically being put into exile. So uh, those cards count towards those totals i think that's pretty strong very cool card i'm excited to build around this actually next up we have ashiok's reaper three and a black for a three three nightmare creature whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield draw a card uh this is really strong because there's a ton of aura tokens in this set called rolls um and each of the rolls even though it's a token, when it does get removed, it is technically going to the graveyard. So it will trigger this draw card ability. Um, and there's no cap on this draw card ability. So you could potentially draw a couple of cards per turn or more. Uh, it's pretty decent. A 3-3 three, three for 4 is a little underpriced or overpriced. But uh, the endless draw card ability is pretty strong. So I think this card is neat. Back for seconds is next. 
two and a black for a sorcery with bargain. So bargain is like a kicker cost. It is an extra cost you pay to cast the spell and it gives you an amplified version of the spell. Uh, so bargaining, you have to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment or token. Again, there's lots of those in this set, so you're not going to be without the ability to bargain very often, but whether or not you want to bargain is up to you. And there's some cards that have kind of pointless bargaining uh, options, and then some cards that are very obvious that you want to bargain, including this one. Uh, so back for seconds says return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. If it was bargained, you may put one of those cards with mana value four or less onto the battlefield instead of into your hand. Very, very good bargain price here because um, it really changes the face of how you use this card. You put something directly onto the battlefield rather than into your hand. I think that that's very worth the bargain price. Uh, neat card. I like it. Next up, we have Borrow Naughty. Uh, it's a one and a black for a one three fairy with flying borrow naughty has lifelink as long as you control another fairy and then for two and a black borrow naughty gets plus one plus oh until end of turn that you can do indefinitely which is really strong um yeah i like that quite a bit i'm just gonna turn this down a little bit uh i like that and then obviously if it has lifelink if you have another fairy um, pumping up Barrow Naughty is very strong because you'll gain more life. It's pretty cool. And the art is awesome. It's a, a decent for what it's what it's worth. Uh, Beseech the Mirror is probably one of the most overhyped cards. And, and for good reason uh, of this whole set. It's already listed at like $40 at my LGS, even though the set's not out yet. Um... Pretty staggering, but it is a very powerful card. So Beseech the Mirror is one black, black, black for a sorcery with bargain. So you can sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast it to get its bargain price. Um, <clears throat> the card says, search your library for a card. Exile it face down, then shuffle. If this spell was bargained, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost if that spell's mana value is four or less. Put the exiled card into your hand if it wasn't cast this way. So basically, Beseech the Mirror is a tutor. Um, you get to put any card in your library into your hand. If you pay its bargain price, so if you sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token, um, you can cast a free four or less card from your deck from your library straight from your library goes into exile then you get to cast it for free um people are talking about this in combination with the one ring because the one ring is one of the most powerful cards at four or less mana value and being able to just tutor it up and cast it for free uh is pretty good pretty strong next up we have candy grapple uh it's a one and a black for an instant with bargain if target Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. If it was bargained, that creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn instead. So this is like a situational bargain where uh, if minus three, minus three will do the job, you don't have to worry about it. If you need to get that extra two uh, damage or to get up to minus five, minus five, then yeah, think about bargaining. So I think this is one of those okay bargain cards. It's not great. It's not bad. It's situational. Um, I dig it. Then we've got Conceited Witch. Two and a black for a 2-3 human warlock with menace. It has an adventure. So again, adventure means that you can cast the adventure um, and put this card into exile. And then you can cast the, the full card from exile at a later moment. Most of the time, adventure cards are designed to do the adventure first and then play the full card. Uh, it's kind of like a lead up. So Conceited Witch's adventure is called Price of Beauty. It's one black for a sorcery. Create a, create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. Uh, so this is an, an, another new mechanic for this set called rolls. They are token auras, enchantments. Um, there are six of them in total. The wicked roll... Um, hold on one sec... So 
the there's six of them in total. The wicked roll says, um, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one. When this aura is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So that's pretty good. It has an extra ability once it leaves. Otherwise, most of the rolls give your creature plus one plus one plus an additional thing. So it's pretty good. I like this. It's not bad. Pretty good. Not bad. Who knows? Uh, Dream Spoilers is next. Three and a black for a 2-2 Fairy Warlock with flying. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn, up to one target creature an opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. This one's okay. Um, I'd like to see it in action to feel kind of how good it is to, or how often you can trigger that minus one, minus one ability. Um, it's interesting because it's not once per turn. So if you manage to cast two or three spells on your opponent's turn, something can get two or three, minus two or three. Uh, so that could be really powerful, but otherwise, it's okay. Next up is Ego Drain. This one's very exciting for me. It's one in, one black mana for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. If you don't control a fairy, you have to exile a card from your hand. As someone who's building a fairy deck, um, this card is going to replace Thoughtseize in a big bad way because I'm never going to have to pay that extra thing. Although if you do cast this on turn one, you will have to pay it. Uh, so it's it's okay. Uh, next up, we have The End. Two black black for an instant. This spell costs two less to cast if your life total is five or less, which is pretty cool. I like the fact that um, it's kind of like a panic button or, um, a get out of jail free card. If you're struggling, if you're near the end of the game, you're about to lose, you get a cheaper removal spell. So the end says exile target creature or planeswalker search its controller's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with the same name and exile them. That player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exile from their hand this way. Um, this is like Necromentia, those types of older designs, but you get that extra added benefit of the panic. I'm about to lose cost reduction. And I think that that's pretty cool. I like this card a lot. Ariette's Whisper is next three and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent discards two cards, create a wicked roll token attached to up to one target creature you control. Again, wicked. The wicked roll says enchanted creature gets plus one plus one. And when this aura is put into a graveyard, each opponent loses a life. So that's pretty decent. Uh, fairy dream thief is next one black for a one one fairy warlock with flying. When fairy dream thief enters the battlefield, surveil one. A nice surveil. I like surveilling. Uh, two and a black exile fairy dream thief from your graveyard draw a card and lose a life so it's multifaceted i like the one one flyer for one i like that you can surveil on turn one that's pretty strong um yeah i like this card fairy fencing is next x and a black for an instant target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn that creature gets an additional minus three minus three until end of turn if you controlled a fairy when you cast it so this is one of those multifaceted removal spells where if you don't have a fairy you're gonna have to pay some money if you do have a fairy this only costs one black to give something minus three minus three um if you need to go above that kill something bigger than that um, then you just pay the extra mana cost to add on to the minus three, minus three, which I think is really strong. Um, I don't know. Potentially this sees some play in non fairy decks. Otherwise I think this is very fairy focused, very, very focused. Um, and I don't think you'll see it very much outside of the fairy decks, but it's nice that they're making the fairy deck so strong. Feed the Cauldron is next. Uh, Kellen is throwing Agatha here into her bubbling cauldron. 
Feed the cauldron is two and a black for an instant. Destroy target creature with mana value three or less. If it's your turn, create a food token. So that's pretty cool. It gives you an added benefit if you use this on your turn. Otherwise, it's just a three mana. Destroy something with three or less mana value. Not terrible, but not good. Uh, Fell Horseman is next. Three and a black for a 3-3 three, three zombie knight. When Fell Horseman dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Uh, so you can't bring this back from your graveyard ever, which is interesting. Uh, it has an adventure on it called Deathly Ride. For one and a black, uh, it's a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Um... If you have more than one copy of Fell Horseman, you cannot target Fell Horseman with Deathly Ride because Death Fell Horseman never goes into your graveyard, um, which is interesting. Uh, it's an okay card. I don't know. Gumdrop Poisoner is next. Two and a black for a 3-2 human warlock with lifelink. When Gumdrop Poisoner enters the battlefield, up to one target creature gets minus X minus X. Uh, until end of turn where X is the amount of life you've gained this turn it has an adventure on it called Tempt with Treats uh, which is an instant for one black create a food token so this is kind of that design I was talking about where the adventure creates you a food token and then you cast the gumdrop poisoner um, hopefully you've already used the food token which means something will get minus three minus three um They've designed a lot of these adventures to play into the main card so that you cast them in the right order instead of casting the, the main card first. Next up, we have High Fade Negotiator. Three black black for a 3-5 fairy warlock with bargain. It has flying, and when High Fade Negotiator enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, each opponent loses three and you gain three life. Uh, this is like a middle-of-the-road bargain I think if that three life really matters to you or to your opponent, then go ahead and bargain. Otherwise, it's just kind of like a big blocker for five mana. It's okay. Uh, next up is Hopeless Nightmare. This one's really cool. Um, Hopeless Nightmare is one black mana for an enchantment. Uh, when Hopeless Nightmare enters the battlefield... Each opponent discards a card and loses two life. When Hopeless Nightmare is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, scry two, and then you can pay two and a black to sacrifice Hopeless Nightmare. Uh, there's a pretty much a whole cycle of these cheap enchantments uh, that you can sacrifice to scry. I think that that's pretty fun. The art on this one is obviously stunning. Pretty cool. This is a decent turn one play in black. Uh, Lich Knight's Conquest is next. Four and a black for a sorcery. Sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, or tokens. Return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, this is a huge card. This card is going to win games. This is a bomb of all bombs. Big, 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 big card. Um, the fact that you can make so many tokens, you can make a ton of artifacts... Um, you can have a bunch of enchantments and then you can just replace all those with car creature cards from your graveyard straight onto the battlefield. That's so strong and it's only five mana. It's it's fairly cheap. The value is there. The payoff is huge. Um, this is a game winning card. This is a I'm going to win the game right now. Let's go. Um, so keep your eye out for Lich Knight's Conquest. Big, big card. Uh, next up, we have Lord Skitter, Sewer King. Two and a black for a 3-3 Rat Noble Legendary Creature. Uh, rats are ob obviously a huge part of the Eldraine story and creature types. And there's a, a rat archetype in Red Black. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, Lord Skitter says, Whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile up to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. So a little bit of graveyard hate. That's not bad. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 black rat creature token with this creature camp block. So all of the 1-1 black rat creature tokens can't block. So I'm going to say that this once, and then I'm going to stop reading the whole thing. 
So every single turn uh, at the beginning of your combat, you get to exile something from your opponent's graveyard because you're going to be making a rat. That's pretty good. And it's a 3-3 three, three for 3, which is just like base mana values. Um, that value is pretty good. Next up, we have Lord Skitter's Blessing. This is Lord Skitter giving the flute to the Pied Piper, uh, which is creepy. One in a black for an enchantment. When Lord Skitter's Blessing enters the battlefield, create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. Again, wicked says plus one, plus one. And whenever this aura is put into a graveyard, each opponent loses a life. Um... The rest of the enchantment says, at the beginning of your draw step, if you control an enchanted creature, lose a life and draw an additional card. Pretty good. It's kind of like Phyrexian Arena plus some. I like it. Lord Skitter's Butcher is next. Two and a black for a 2-3 Rat Peasant. Lord Skitter's Butcher. When Lord Skitter's Butcher enters the battlefield, choose one. Create a 1-1 one, one Black Rat Creature Token that can't block. Uh, sacrifice another creature if you do scry to then draw a card or creatures you control gain menace until end of turn um, this is a fine card I guess uh, it's definitely good in the Lord Skitter deck if you're playing around that ETB trigger I think you can continuously keep your opponent's graveyard empty with all that graveyard hate and rat triggers so I think that that's, that's pretty solid Next up is Minstrosity, like Monstrosity, but it's made out of mints. Uh, one in a black for a 3-1 horror. When Minstrosity dies, create a food token. Is this going in my Umbris deck? I believe it will. Um, especially because I just like the play on words. I'm a word play. That's my kink, is word play. Uh, not dead after all. This card I'm excited about. It's one black for an instant until end of turn. Target creature gains. Target creature you control gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control, then create a wicked token attached to it. And wicked again is plus one plus one. And when it goes to the graveyard, each opponent loses a life. Um a strong roll for sure. It's definitely going to work out in the card's favor. Um this is just a another example of that really strong like not dead yet kind of mechanic where you get to react to something about to die uh i like it so rankles prank is next uh they really missed the opportunity to call this rankles prankle i think that would have been way funnier it's two black black for a sorcery choose one or more each player discards two cards each player loses four life each player sacrifices two creatures um Obviously, this is very even for both sides of the the game. But, uh, you know, if you're playing, say, a, a fairy tokens deck or a rat tokens deck, like you might not mind sacrificing two creatures. And your opponent might mind quite a bit if they have to sacrifice two creatures. Um, you could also choose all of them. So if you have no cards in your hand, you can also potentially get a value out of that if you have more life than your opponent obviously both players losing to life uh is pretty good i think this is more going to be a fun little commander card but uh we'll see if it pops up in standard or constructed formats at all next up is rat out one black for an instant up to one target creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn and then you create a one one black rat not bad. Rowan's Grim Search is next. Two and a black for an instant with bargain. If this spell was bargained, look at the top four cards of your library, then put up to two of them back on top of your library in any order and the rest into your graveyard. And then you draw two cards and lose two life. So this is an example of a good bargain card because the draw two, lose two is fine. But if you bargain it, you get the option to pick the two cards you're about to draw out of the top four cards of your library. So it's a lot stronger if you bargain it and it can really set you up to kind of win uh, in the next couple of turns 
depending on what you choose and what's available on the top of your library. Otherwise, you're just picking two cards randomly. Like, it's blind. Um, so this is a very good example of the bargain mechanic. Next up is Scream Puff, one of my favorite cards from this color. Four and a black for a 4-5 horror creature with death touch. Whenever Scream Puff deals combat damage to a player, create a food token. Yes, I'm putting this in my Umbris deck. Yes, I love the play on words. Um, it's magical. I love it. Shatter the Oath is next. Really cool art by Dominic Mayer here. Uh, three black black for a sorcery. Destroy target creature or enchantment. Create a wicked roll token. Attach it to up to one target creature you control. So this is kind of expensive sorcery speed. So it's definitely not as good. Uh, but there's a lot of four mana. Destroy something plus get a treasure or what have you. Grim bounty types of cards. Um, so this one's a little bit more expensive because you get the extra benefit of making that wicked roll token. But do I think that that extra money, extra mana is worth it? I don't. I think this is going to be fine if you're in desperate need of removal um, in limited. Otherwise, this card is not making it anywhere near, anywhere near constructed formats. Uh, next up is Spectre of Mortality. Three and three black black for a three three Spectre. Terrible value. Uh, it has flying. When Specter of Mortality enters the battlefield, you may exile one or more creature cards from a graveyard. So basic graveyard hate, still not strong enough. When you do, each other creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards exiled this way. Oh. You may exile one or more creature cards from a graveyard. I did not read this right the first time. So you play this for five, you could exile 10 creature cards from a graveyard and give something minus 10, minus 10. Plus you get to take all of potentially your opponent's creatures out of their graveyard instead of just one. I thought it was just one. Okay. That's pretty good. This is basically a flying creature with removal attached to it. It's going to be pretty rare that you whiff by the time you have enough mana to cast a creature like this, there's going to be stuff in graveyards. Um, you're going to be able to, if you have to, pick your own graveyard, exile stuff from there. If you have the Ashiok Planeswalker and you've made a couple of these nightmare tokens and exiling your own stuff might just be worth it. Um, where did we go? I lost my thing. There it is. Uh, that's pretty strong, actually. Dang. I definitely read this wrong the first time. This is stronger than I thought. Next up is Spiteful Hex Mage. It's one black for a 3-2 human warlock. Whenever Spiteful Hex Mage enters the battlefield, create a cursed roll token attached to target creature you control. So this is interesting because if you play this on turn one, you have to attach that to Spiteful Hex Mage. But if you play this on a turn where you already have another creature on the battlefield, you don't have to attach it to Spiteful Hex Mage. You can attach it to something else. Um, I believe it was the last color in blue. We were talking about a card um, that just seemed like it was too slow to become good. And I get the idea that you want to design a card that looks really scary on turn one, but is actually held back a bit and i think this is the perfect example of it you play this on turn one your opponent goes oh dang um they're not here to screw around but then this gets cursed so you have to find a way to remove the curse as quickly as possible to make this card worthwhile and i think that that is the ideal design for that mentality um and in previous examples that we've talked about in this set so far uh those Designs were just a little off, like it didn't feel viable. Whereas this one feels viable. I like this one. Especially because the cursed roll is technically an enchantment. So you can bargain. As long as you have a bargain card you can play on the next turn or turns afterwards, uh, you can get rid of the curse. So it's pretty good. Sting Blade Assassin is next. Three and a black for a 3-1 Fairy Assassin with Flash and Flying. 
Whenever Stingblade Assassin enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. Uh, this is fine. It's decent. I like that it has flash, so you can play it uh, at opponent's end step. It is expensive, but it is decent situational removal attached to a creature that and and on the next turn you get to attack with a three one in the air that's that's a, a bit stronger than some of the previous examples of this kind of design um so i like it next up is sugar rush one and a black for an instant target creature gets plus three plus oh until end of turn draw a card not bad these combat tricks are like hard to judge from the outside looking in but once we get to play these cards and and draft this set a bit more we'll see a lot more um either value or undervalue in some of these cards i think this one's probably a little bit undervalue but we'll have to wait and see sweet tooth witch is next two and a black for a three two human warlock when sweet tooth witch enters the battlefield create a food token and then you can pay to sacrifice a food target player loses two life so that's pretty fun um a three two for three is just below mana value par um but getting the food token is good you could either use it to gain yourself three life or use it to um take two life away from your opponent which is neat uh yeah i like that it's got more than one use to it Taken by Nightmares is next. Two black black for an instant. Exile target creature. If you control an enchantment, scry two. Uh, this is a far better version of that um, Shatter the Oath. This is the type of removal I expect from four mana, two black black. It's very popular in the last like two years. We've seen a handful of cards that are just get rid of something for two black black. Um, and this is no different. This is just an iterated version. There being lots of enchantments in this set, obviously you get a bonus if you control an enchantment. So I think this is stellar. Uh, this is good removal. Take this if you're drafting this set. Tangled Colony is next. This is really sad. All the rats with their tails tangled. This happens all the time in real life and it's like really sad. Uh, one in a black for a 3-2 rat creature. Tangled Colony can't block. When Tangled Colony dies, create X11 black rat creature tokens that can't block, where X is the amount of damage dealt to it this turn. Um, so it can't block, so you can't throw it in front of something in order to trigger that ability. But it also decentivizes your opponent from blocking it, so it's almost like it has Skulk. Your opponents don't want to block this especially if they have something that has lots of power on the board because they're just going to end up giving you more rats. Um, so this is an interesting design. I think it's going to play well. Twisted Sewer Witch is next. Three black black for a three four human warlock. When Twisted Sewer Witch enters the battlefield, create a one one black creature token that can't block. Then for each rat you control, create a wicked roll and attach it to that rat. So it gives... This uh, Sewer Witch gives all of your rats plus one, plus one. And whenever that aura attached to it is put into a graveyard, each opponent loses a life. So this is really fun because you can bargain those rolls away. Uh, you can make your rats back into one ones and then drain, not drain, uh, but ping your opponent for one life each time. Um, I think this is really cool for the go wide rats synergy. And then we've got the black virtue. So there's a virtue card in each color. Uh, the cycle is very powerful. The black one is five black black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. No matter what, at the start of your turn, you put a creature from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Super strong. Uh, it also has an adventure attached to it. Uh, Lock Castle Lockthwain is the black castle from the original Eldraine, so this one's called Lockthwain Scorn. One in a black for a sorcery. Target creature gets minus two, sorry, minus three, minus three until end of turn, and you gain two life. Um, so, again, this is probably like 
the second most powerful virtue so far. I think it goes white, black, blue so far. Um, I will probably be doing a video where we tier rank all of the cycles from this set. Um, but this one's pretty strong. Next up is Ferocious Vermin. Two and a black for a 2-1 rat creature. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 black rat creature token that can't block. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a 1-1 counter on Ferocious, Ver Voracious Vermin. Um, that's pretty strong. It's like that um, Westfall vampire or whatever. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger, especially if you're playing the rat deck. I like that quite a bit. Warehouse Tabby is next. One black for a 1-1 one, one cat creature. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token that can't block. And then one and a black, you can pay. Warehouse Tabby gains death touch until end of turn. This is actually really strong in conjunction with the Twisted Sewer Witch because if you give all of your rats wicked roll tokens, then you can put those enchantments into the graveyard one by one and you keep getting rats you keep getting rats back and then if you can find a way to blink twisted sewer which you can put new auras on all those rats i think that's pretty neat uh next up is wicked visitor one and a black for a 2-2 two -two nightmare whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield each opponent loses one life um this is okay it's not great but it's not bad and then last for black is the witch's vanity this is one and a black for an enchantment saga chapter one is destroy target creature and opponent controls with mana value two or less so already makes it really strong to play on turn two uh, chapter two is create a food token chapter three create a wicked roll token attach it to target creature you control um this is really good i think this is on par with like the okiba reckoners raid uh kind of saga where you play this early it does some things right away if your opponent played something played a creature on turn one or a creature on turn two um and you're on the draw you can destroy that thing right away and then you get a food token so you have some extra life plus something you can bargain later if you need to i think this is really strong um, and that's it for black. I think that, uh, you know, I definitely misread this card. And I think this is more powerful than I originally thought. I think Spiteful Hex Mage has the chance to become the new, like, tenacious underdog sort of vibe where it's underappreciated until people figure it out. And then it becomes super appreciated. Um,. But I think that stuff like Fairy Fencing, uh, The End, or Ego Drain are probably my picks for the sleeper cards in this color. I think... I mean, Lich Knight's Conquest is going to be absolutely busted. I think people are going to ignore this card early and then pick up on it later. Um, yeah, really powerful stuff like Ashiok's Reaper. Obviously, if you get a bomb like Ashiok or Beseech the Mirror, those cards are going to be really strong. Um, I think Beseech the Mirror is probably the best card in this color by quite a large margin, um, simply because of all the combinations it can be a part of in constructed formats. So I think that that's very interesting.